Hey, it's Becca. I hope you'll join me today as I give this room a much needed refresh. Welcome to our dining room, also known as one of the most neglected rooms in our home. And I say that because we never, ever, ever eat in here. Okay, sure, it has served as the kids' table a few times over the years, but other than that, it just sits here empty. And while I do need to change that, the first thing I want to change is how it looks. Nothing major, just a little bit of a refresh. Having said that, I've taken away the accessories and chairs and I'm ready to get started. Any guesses as to what I'm about to do? Before I show you, I did want to chat about this room for a minute in case you're new here. These are murals. It's peel and stick wallpaper. They are part of an entire wall mural, but I only, when I ordered it, I just wanted one section of it. So the shop owner was kind enough to be able to print one section and I really liked the tree and the scene with the fence looking into the little village down below. So what she did is she printed that and then a mirror image of the same part of the landscape so that the trees are facing each other. And if you are addicted to symmetry like I am, you'll understand why I did it this way. As for the chandelier, we bought this a few years ago and I'm gonna link it below. If you are looking for a large crystal chandelier, you will wanna take a look at this one. The price is so affordable and you would not believe how pretty it sparkles when the light hits it during the day or even when we have the lights on in the evening. And then we have this table here. It's been here for many years. My sister gave it to me. And then down below, I have layered rugs, starting with, this is actually an indoor outdoor rug. I will link this one or something similar down below. And then the faux hide rug. I love to layer rugs. I think it just adds a lot of fun interest and it really anchors your space. And then over on this wall, we have the buffet. It used to have a hutch on top, but we sold it many years ago. Just keeping the bottom half. Have the wall shelf, peg rack, and then the wall lights, which you can hardwire them if you want to, but I snipped off the wires and just added battery operated tea lights when I want that little bit of ambiance. All right, back to the project. I will say it involves the walls below the chair rail. And as a side note, we added the picture frame boxes about a year, I think, after we moved in. It was before I really delved into DIY, so I did not make these. We purchased them just like this from Lowe's. And I will say they were not really expensive. I will link these below for you as well in case you have been wanting to do the same. And now back to my little project. Surprise, surprise, I'm gonna paint. Before I get started, I just wanted to share two of my favorite products to work with when I'm painting. If I don't need a larger regular size roller, this is my favorite. It's a four inch and this is the foam roller. I really prefer this one. As for a brush, this is my favorite brush. It's an angled brush or sash brush, and I like that it has the short rubber handle. It's really comfortable and easy to work with. painting is all done, but before I share it with you, I have one more project. You know, I have a few gold accents in here and I want the curtain rod to be gold as well. I'm too lazy to take it outside and spray paint it, so I'm going to leave it in place and use one of my favorite products. And that is Rub and Buff. I use this in the kitchen and up in our bedroom, and I just wanted you to see how little the tube is in comparison to the foam brush, just so when I say a little goes a long way, it truly does. 
So I'll either apply it with that bone brush or with the cloth, and then once it dries, I'll just buff it off. This really is a quick and easy project, I promise. And just look at the difference. Here is the before. And here is the after. Although it is so cloudy outside that even with the light on in here, you can barely tell I painted it, but I promise I did. You saw how gold the finials looked in that uh, last clip. Start to finish, this was about 15 minutes. I just used a foam brush to apply it and then wiped it off with a rag. I was going for an imperfect weathered look. So hopefully I achieved that, but I really like how it ties up with the wall lights, the gold mirror, and the gold handles on the furniture. Back to the wall color. Here's where we started. And thanks to Sherwin-Williams Retreat, here's what it looks like now. I went with Retreat for a couple of reasons, but the murals were really the inspiration for it because we have the green in the trees and then in the landscape down below, the rolling hills. I wanted to continue the green from those hills down below. So it almost looks like it's part of the landscape. The other reason I went with the retreat in here is because I recently used it in the kitchen on the island and the doors and then on the fireplace in the family room. So having it in all three rooms, I feel like it just flows and ties everything together. Before I start decorating, I need to frame this beautiful print that I recently purchased. I still can't believe that it matches the wall murals in the dining room. All I'm doing is taping it to the mat of one of my go-to picture frames, adding the backing, securing it, and then voila, a budget-friendly and fabulous new piece of artwork.
all done decorating, wanted to chat with you about it for a minute, starting with the shelves. Now, because I have the mural behind them, murals behind them, I don't want them to be too visually heavy. So I try to keep my pieces to a minimum, although sometimes that doesn't always work. Just brought in pictures, a bowl, a little bit of greenery, and glass right in the middle since you can see right through it. Down below on the sideboard, just two lamps and a little bit of faux greenery. Again, keeping it simplistic, but I did choose these branches because they're long and flowy, so I feel as though it helps visually to fill in the space on each side of the picture. And then over at the table, I brought in white chairs, and then I brought back the slip cover chairs for the head and the foot. I'm a big fan of mixing wood chairs with those that have fabric. And talk about a simple centerpiece. This is it. A tray, a dishcloth, and I went with the green and white to tie in with the newly painted walls, and then a cake stand with a cloche. I'll save a tablescape for summer, which it's gonna be here before you know it. And over here, I am so happy I found that print on Etsy since it matches the wall murals. I framed it with one I had on hand, although I did add a little bit of the same rub and buff that I added to the curtain rod to the frame so that it ties in with that and the other gold accents in the room. On the peg rack hung my go-to white dish cloths, although adding a green and white one as well, again, to tie in with the new wall color. Brought in candle holders, my favorite battery-operated candles. Brought back the soup tureen, placing it on a ribbon charger that matches the one that I placed on the other side of the room, just so it all ties together. And of course, more faux florals and greenery. Thanks so much for being here today. Before you go, I hope you'll consider subscribing to my channel. Have a great week and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.